So as you enter the mini boss chamber of the forest temple, then the door will shut behind you, and Link will be stuck in this room alone with uh, Ook the baboon, who uh, his head looks a little strange, you'll notice, and uh, he has that boomerang which he is charging up with that dark energy or whatnot. And he will then throw it, and it will uh, slice the stems of the, some baba serpents that are hanging from the ceiling. So just make note of the fact that you can do that. Uh, whenever there are baba serpents, you always want to kill them first. So he will then taunt you by smacking his butt, and he will then start running around. Uh, so kill the baba serpents first, and then go chase after him. Uh, the boomerang is pretty easy to avoid. You can defend against it, and then just strafe. Whatever, it's not that hard. Uh, Ook, however, is kind of awkward to chase after. He usually will stop every fourth uh, totem or so when he jumps to, and then he will uh, throw the boomerang. While he's, the boomerang is thrown, he will stay still. You want to roll into the totem. This will make him lose his balance, and the boomerang will come back and hit him as opposed to him catching it. Uh, once it is hit, he will fall to the ground. You want to quickly uh, run over and s slice his butt. Um, after this, then you just want to continue to... The battle will continue. Every once in a while, he will... Uh, try and throw it at the ceiling to hit one of the Baba Serpents. Like, there he tried to do it and it didn't quite work, and I'm not really sure why. If you want to continue to smack him, it shouldn't be too difficult for you. The battle pretty much progresses the same way. Um, every once in a while he will try and trip you out and he'll act like he's going to throw it, and then he'll continue jumping around. I just love the way his butt cheeks jiggle when you smack him. Also, if you are running low on health at any point during this battle, you can uh, slash the jars and the grass and stuff that are uh, around the room and it will give you recovery hearts most likely. Uh, so like right here, for example, he smacked down some more uh, Baba Serpents, however they did not uh, fall to the ground in time to uh, come and attack me. Uh, once you've hurt him sufficiently, then he will run forward and bonk into one of the totems and this will release the uh, dark insect that was attached to his head. You'll notice that now his head looks slightly different, um, so now he is back to his old self. And this is, has to do with how the monkeys from earlier said that, you know, he was acting funny in the head and stuff, and that was because the insect was making him all funny. He will then, as he's come to, him, to himself, I don't know if he's just bashful or what, but he sees you and gets all scared and runs away. Um, in any case, then you will then see the boomerang is lying there, and as Link walks towards it, then the boomerang will wake up and it will say that I am the fairy of the winds, and uh, evil power that was controlling me is now gone, and so I will bless you with my power and such, and it explains briefly that if you can focus the power, and it will unleash the power of the wind. So, the, this is the Gale boomerang, and it actually works different than a lot of boomerangs that have been in previous Zelda titles. It doesn't really... Uh, damage enemies for the most part as much as it uses wind power to bring enemies to you. So very useful for attacking things far away enemies, especially weaker enemies such as keys and such, uh, but it doesn't really hurt harder enemies for the most part, uh, but you can use it to briefly stun enemies before you go and smack them with your sword and such. Um, so, real quick, uh, Minda mentions that this isn't really what she was looking for, uh, however it'll be very useful to uh, aid you in your quest. Now real quick, I'm going to just show you uh, quickly how to use the boomerang. Uh, they don't really tell you this, or at least they're not very specific about it, but you use the boomerang like regular, and it goes a certain distance. But you can also use the Z button to lock on, it shows it at the bottom of the screen to lock, and you can lock up to five things at once. And, you know, they tell you that and everything, what they don't tell you is that it allows you to reach much farther things. If you lock onto something really far away, then the boomerang will go all the way over there. Uh, so it can reach really far. So if you lock onto stuff, then uh, the boomerang will hit that exact place, that pinpoint location, but it will also go a much farther distance. Uh, so later on you are required to do that, however, they don't really uh, force you to use this uh, locked on thing in order for range early on. So, that being said, we're just getting that out of the way, just so you know that, uh, so that you don't later on get stuck and go, Oh, I don't know, my boomerang can't reach. Okay, so that is all for this room. You want to hit the spinner that is above the door. This will cause the, uh, the, the bars that were in front of the door to rise, whatever, a little bit. You have to hit it three times with your boomerang to uh, open the door entirely. So go head on through. And now the monkeys are gone from this bridge, uh, so we're going to have to go to the left side. And actually, we can use the spinners now to... Um, make the bridges face whichever direction you want. So you'll be able to use turn all of the bridges anytime you want, and uh, thus you'll be able to reach a whole bunch of hidden areas you hadn't been to before. Uh, in this next area, there is a vocal blend. You should easily be able to defeat him. There, I used an ending blow. Here, there is a another one of these monkeys, and it is like attached by like a spider web, I think, something. Maybe it's a little rope. If you want to use your boomerang on the spider web looking thing, and this will make the monkey's cage fall down and it will release it. The monkey will then run off 
And Minda will then comment, well, I guess there's still some more monkeys out there. Um, and she just says, well, heck, just go ahead and save them all, and we might get something good out of it. So, go ahead and work your way to the right. We Now we're heading to the south, and once again, there are uh, there's some keys here, and I'm just trying to show how the boomerang... See, let's see, watch that. I used the boomerang, and it uh, sucked up the, the keys, and it brought it back to me. So, uh, the boomerang is very useful on some of the weaker enemies, especially when later on you have keys that are powered up with, like, ice and fire and such. They're a little more difficult, and you really don't want them to attack you, because then they will hurt you quite a bit. Uh, and those ones in particular, it's really nice to use the boomerang to, uh, to kind of stun them and keep them from attacking you. Once you head back to this room, you want to head off to the left, actually, and this time we're going to go back into this room with the tile worms. Now that we have the boomerang, we can actually defeat them, so you want to hop on down and you can just simply Z-target them when you stand kind of far away so that they're kind of peeking up and looking at you. You want to Z-target them and use the boomerang, this will make them fall into the water and then you'll defeat them. Now if they do not fall in the water, like this one for example, you want to kill it before it can uh, get up and start trying to climb back into its hole. You can also use the boomerang to lock on to things like rupees and such uh, and bring them to you. Uh, occasionally it'll bring them directly into your hands, other times you'll have to uh, pick it up off the ground after it brings it back to you. So, we're going to continue killing the tile worms. You don't really have to kill them all, but you'll notice that the uh, boomerang is actually uh, knocking out the fire out of some of these torches, and it's like blowing them out. And so this is actually making the uh, making the uh, platforms and such, is making them go back down. So you'll notice that there is, I'm just going to knock off this final one so you can see how, that, how that's happening. So you'll realize that this is, reveals a, uh, a chest back here, so open it up and this will give you the second heart piece found in this dungeon. So that should give you your total of three heart pieces so far if you've been following the walkthrough thus far. That is all we had to do in this room, so go ahead and leave. Um, and that is everything we're doing here, so you want to return to the main room. So now that we are back in the main room here, the center, you can use the uh, monkeys to get back to the center platform. You'll see that there are some stuff uh, that is hanging from the ceiling by spider webs, and you may have like glanced at them earlier, but the one in the middle is the one that interests us, and that is uh, a large chest, so you can uh, bring it down, you can open it up to get the compass, and I'll talk more about that in a second. And I accidentally, in the process, uh, knocked down this uh, platform by blowing out one of the torches. I wasn't actually intending to do it right then. However, at the end of that area there is a um, small chest that's hiding behind a bomb of a wall. You can use the bomb that's nearby to blow up the wall, and you can actually uh, like suck him up with the Gale Boomerang, and this will like bring him into your hands from a distance, so that's pretty cool. You can set him down in front of that bomb of a wall, and then open the chest to get some rupees. Uh, in any case, you want to head back up here and open the chest to get the compass, and as I said earlier, every dungeon has a dungeon map and a compass. The compass allows you to see where all the hidden small chests are, uh, as well as like where elevators are and such, uh, and in this case it actually will help you find the remaining monkeys, so that's pretty cool. So the compass is very useful for all the dungeons you want to find it. So head back, continue working your way to the, uh, to the west, and in this room you'll see that there are actually two remaining uh, chests that we have yet to get. So in here there's that, uh, that pygmy um, Scatula again, so you want to kill that. You can use the boomerang this time to knock it off of its uh, web or whatever. It'll fall down and fall into the water and die. So here in this room, you'll see there's like a Z on the floor. And this actually took me a while to figure this part out. You want to um, hit the uh, spinners in the order of the Z right here. I'm not really sure what the deal is here. I'm hitting it all in the right order, but the boomerang is totally freaking out and going all over the place. So like here, I did it in the correct order, but there it goes repeatedly on the other one. After this, it finally works correctly. In any case, once you hit it in the right order, uh, without it... There we go, so now it worked. Um, once you hit it in the correct order, then the uh, gate will open, you will have access to the boss key. So you want to go pick that up, and this, this big key will allow you to open the boss door. This is another dungeon item that is in every dungeon. And you'll need it in order to get to the boss room. So even if you have gotten everything, you've gotten all the items and such, you will need the boss key before you can uh, finish the dungeon. So now, before we um, before we leave this room, you'll see that there's one more um, treasure chest to be found in this room, and it is over in this corner. You just want to hop in the water and go open this chest to get uh, some rupees. 
dun, 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 dun. So with that, you want to just uh, work your way to the to the north, and we will head through that door. Um, and that is pretty much all the time I have for this video. I'm just going to be heading through to that north door. And uh, so just check me out on this next video. We will continue working our way through the final uh, chunk of the temple.